Welcome, Welcome to the Nightly Rant with your, your hosts, hosts, Mike and Toria. This is the show where we examine society from a sarcastic point of view. If you like insane conversations, this is definitely the show for you. Let's get into today's topic. Dude, this is like deja vu. We never let the dogs podcast with us. And twice in like the past three weeks we have. Yeah. And already... I've had to confiscate one toy today. And but both times the show starts off the same way. Us I'm talking being about accosted the by oh. a Douglas. He really is accosting you. He is like totally <laughs> loving into me. He's leaning. And if I stop, he pushes at me. It's really sort of cute. Um It's how he shows he loves you. Yeah, it's interesting. Um so it was an exciting, busy bleeping week last week. Why was it exciting? It was the Super Bowl week. Oh, I get it. And since we live in Las Vegas, we got to experience all things Super Bowl. We got to experience all things NFL, except, of course, the actual game. We spent thousands and thousands of dollars for a ticket. The average price that people paid to attend the Super Bowl was 10,000 and change. Yeah. That's. I have Fucking no interest. Nuts. I have no interest. I saw it better. I saw the game better by the TV in better company. You and Rachel. That was nice. Yeah, I mean, we had a snack parade. We had good company. We watched the Puppy Bowl instead of Usher. Worked out. But again, so, la- of so last week was a really exciting but exhausting week. It was definitely exhausting. I will. I will give you that. Super Bowl week. Here in Las Vegas. And here we are in Las Vegas. Like, we've had so much luck. We had the Super Bowl, well, not the Super Bowl. We had the Stanley Cup champions last year. Um, now we got the Super Bowl here. I mean, let's not I forget mean, to mention the Aces because they are the champions. Yeah, the Aces are two time WNBA champions. Like, this city is like Championville. Sports champion town. And that's then, good news for the A's when they move here. We would hope, right? Um, <laughs> good luck with that. Um, anyway, the Super Bowl events that we went to, you know, we recorded these for our What Happens in Vegas channel. And um, those videos are already out. You can go see them um, <laughs> at uh, YouTube.com forward slash at WHIV. Go watch the video. But we went to what was it called? Um, opening night. Opening Super Bowl opening night. Right. And it was basically what a. A press conference for the teams and yeah. a little show for the NFL. And photo opportunities for fans and stuff like that. I guess what I would call it, they call it opening night, but it, like the Olympics calls it opening ceremonies. And that's kind of what it felt like to me. It was like they were, ta-da, we're, we're about to have the Super Bowl. I mean, way less pomp and circumstance than the Olympics, but yeah, kind of the same idea. Do the Olympics have a, does the Olympics opening ceremony have a press conference? Um, Sometimes. The athletes are made available to media. Hmm. But it's interesting because it just kind of seemed like it was a rah rah, here we are, it's time for the Super Bowl. Don't forget to watch kind of a week. Right. And like we already kind of talked about the dumb lady and her not letting them us by, et cetera, I believe. Have we not? No, we've never discussed that on the show. I am shocked. We didn't podcast last week. We did it on Sunday. Oh. Well, we tried to leave probably 45 minutes before it was over, over, because all they were going to do next was cut in and out of interviews for the 49er players. And really, when I say cut in and out, I mean, like, they go in, they come out, and then they're talking to some bozo that you don't even care about. And you're looking at the guy going, I don't recognize you. Who the hell are you? And the 49ers fans were were mega obnoxious. Yeah, they were rude. So, so we're trying to leave and this lady has food on her lap. And I mean, I don't think I've ever seen a tray, like a cardboard tray that big at a sporting It was a event. lot. That was a huge cardboard tray that she had. And it, had, it was full of food. She had like nachos and a hot dog and something. And I think she even had fries, which is weird. <laughs> yeah, it was the biggest tray of food I think I've ever seen in my life at a sporting event. And so I kind of walked up and I was like, excuse me, we're trying to leave. And she just kind of looks at me and then she looks down at her food. 
And she looks at me. She goes back to her food. So then I say it again. She does it again. And I say it one more time. Then she looks at me, looks at the food, looks at me, looks at the food. This is on the third time. Looks at me one more time, looks at the food, starts shaking her head, picking her tray up, shaking her head, shaking her head, standing up, looking at me, giving me the dirtiest look like I'm the biggest jerk in the world. You know, God forbid I should want to go home. Meanwhile, I'm like a foot behind him going, why the fuck is this taking so long? Like, why is this bitch not moving? Yeah, she's doing the smart thing of not like cramming in behind me um, until she knows we're going. That's a smart thing. So this lady's like shaking her head. And so I kind of lean in and I go, that's it. Shake your head a little harder and what little brains you have left will fall out. And then I laugh. You didn't even get to see her facial re- reaction to that? No, like- I just left. I didn't care. I wasn't to get a reaction. It was to make the statement. Yes, I know. I'm an asshole. That explains why she looked so mad when I went past her. It's true. I'm an <laughs> asshole some of the time deserved it though you know what you sit your ass in a seat it's your responsibility to get up if people who are in inside seats need to get out it's just what you do it's called being a courteous human being clearly she's not capable yeah and lo and behold she was a 49 49ers fan yep and you know that's why we said they're obnoxious because there was a dude pounding on the seat behind us and then there was her and then their team would boo the other team yeah but the other team didn't boo them that was wrong. And some people would say, well, then they should have booed them. No, good sportsmanship is you don't boo. These are the two best bleeping football teams in the United States. The two best. Why aren't they showing respect for each other? Both directions. Well, we have to add this little note in there. We are not Kansas City fans either. No, I mean, I'm a, I'm, I've been open about it. I'm the fact that I'm a Denver Broncos fan. Anyone who's a football fan would know that a Denver fan will not be a KC Chiefs fan. And I told Toria when we were sitting there on Super Bowl opening night day, it was like a Wednesday. Monday. It was a Monday. Mm-hmm. Right. It was the other event that was on a Wednesday, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So we went on Monday and I told her then, I don't care who wins yet. What do I care? I'm going to decide by the fans tonight. And then 49er fans were so obnoxious. That I was like, I got a chair for the Chiefs. Yes, yeah, so it made it it made it very easy. When I mentioned the dude sitting behind me pounding on the seat, every time that they would say something about the 49ers, he would hammer on he was sitting in the row behind us. He would hammer on the front of the seat two seats away from me as hard as he could. Shaking my entire existence. Yeah, nice, right? And of course, because I was sitting there, I was the the shake dampener, so you didn't get all the shaked. Shake, well, but these people his. today, I, I know that some people are going to think, oh, he's using these terms. It's what people are talking about. They have this main character syndrome. They're it. <laughs> They're the main character in a movie. And everything revolves around them because they're the main character. You know, I watched, I've watched a lot of movies in my lifetime. And it's very rare you watch a movie where the main character is completely inconsiderate of every single other person around them. But that's what people are are doing now. Well, like, and I, it, it's kind of scary to me. And it, I was surprised you didn't jump on this, but I'm kind of proud of you at the same time that you probably took some time to think about it or maybe you haven't yet. But when I told you that Gary V said that the big thing that people need to be doing in 2024 is streaming everything they do during their workday. Want to know my first thought about that was my very, very first like 0.02 seconds was well, that's a cool idea. My, then after that, it was, what the hell are you talking about? If you encourage people to go walking around streaming every bleeping thing they do, the whole world will become a television show. Mm-hmm. Like, what the we're, hell we're is this? Truman Show any minute now. What the hell is that? I was like, no, don't do it. That's a bad idea. Don't do it. Do I know what my first thoughts are were when you said that about the streaming your entire work? Uh-huh. The reason I love working from home and doing what I do is because I don't have to wear pants if I don't want to. And if I wanted to stream everything I did, I would have to wear pants or it would be a different kind of stream. (laughs) 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 Yep. I hear you. I mean, that's, that's an extreme reason, but just to me, first of all, 
it's the truth what am i doing that's so exciting that i you know i some days i sit here and have meeting after 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 meeting so you're gonna see a video of me looking at a screen talking to a person all flipping day well and then logistically it gets kind of shitty too because like both of us work with confidential information yeah (laughs) well he does things like he says on there screen will be blurred at times um the stream is muted um during my business meetings yeah but then who's gonna like i i just think it's dumb i think if you were doing something cool I'm I'm not saying I'm not saying that I don't think it's dumb. I'm literally saying that at first millisecond I thought, "Wow, cool!" Then it was like, "Wait a second, I know the dumbest idea I've ever heard of." Like seriously, but what I'm scared of more is like I was saying, uh, all the people just coming on board with this idea, and then everywhere you go, someone's going to be sticking a camera in your face everywhere you go. What? It's it's just dumb. It's just dumb. I've said this to you, like, I know Vegas influencers, some of them walk around, and I think it's so that they get their watch time up Mm -hmm. for for financial reasons. I think they're going for bonuses. And so they go out there and they live stream themselves walking around the strip. Mm -hmm. Well, they probably figure, hey, bro, I'm here to film a video anyway. Why not live stream while I'm walking to my video shoot? What the hell? Why not? I can do that. And then, you know, you increase your views and whatnot. But I find it boring. I don't watch that stuff. And that's the problem is if if we don't, if you don't like the content, you're not going to put out the content. So anyway. Back I think, to the Super Bowl. I think, no, and that's what I was going to get at is then we decided, all right, we're going to go to, um, it was on Wednesday and it was the, the fan experience. experience. Yeah. And that was really cool. Except they were stupid. Yeah. Right as you come in. They decide that FedEx should deliver the Lombardi Trophy on a huge stage right there as you come in. Oh, and by the way, the lane to go left and right was able to have two people deep next to each other, two next Mm -hmm. to each other. That's it. So you get this huge crowd coming in, being funneled in from a wide open hallway into this two lane thing. While they're doing this presentation, that blocked all F in place. Up. And it was a long presentation, too, <laughs> because those people had had a chance to build up, obviously. Yes. That was awful. That was the, the judgment used to plan that specific area was awful. It took us probably 30 percent of the time that we were there was spent going from when you first got to where you could see the stage there to where we could actually move, like where those big football helmets mm-hmm. were took us a third of the time that we were there so if we were there if we were there 90 minutes it would be 30 minutes of that 90 minutes it was really cool though because they, okay, they had like they had like pre-sized football helmets for all the teams yeah they were huge yeah they were huge and then they had they had like these <clears throat> football player things that were running that you could put your face in and get a picture yeah Those were took pretty a picture neat. of me and the broncos one yep then they had a giant gift shop where you bought your football yeah and uh then they had all of these like activities and stuff where like people could get in line and they could like run to the 50 yard line or whatever yeah he did a 50 yard dash basically Mm -hmm. um there's a whole bunch of throwing they had a gaming area where it was put on by madden and i I assume they must have just had madden there madden yeah madden had their video game bus then they had a pickleball court like two of them yeah that was weird people were playing pickleball that was strange i don't know what that has to do i know me either it's like whatever um, and then there was one big giant field where they were doing all sorts of like, like when I say they, youth, kids, like maybe 11 and 12, were doing all sorts of drills. And those kids were good. Like they were good. So. Well, and then they had a whole, they had a whole Hall of Fame thing in there with all like football through the decades. Yeah, it was rad. I and mean, like, yeah. like they had um, old footballs from different Super Bowls that you could look at. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was four days. It was a four day event. Your tickets got you in on one day. Yeah. But at various spots throughout the four days, there was like football players were there signing things from all the teams. Yeah. Not just the. Yeah. It's a very well done. I think it it showed me how professional the NFL really is. Because it was really well done. But then, you know, 
we get to um, game day. And kind of last minute-ish, I think mainly because we never neither one of us thought. To invite people over. To invite someone, right? We're not used to that. We're not used to getting the yes and having them right. over. Um, anyway, we... we um, Invited, invited her cool friend Rachel. our friend Rachel over to watch a Super Bowl with us. And we told her she could bring her dog because she'd recently babysat Doug right. for a couple of nights. And her dog is clingy. And her dog's very clingy. So there's the Doug. Um, you said his name. Yep. I looked down and there's this little guy wagging his tail at me. Anyway, he's super cute. Um, so she, so, so she brings dog. her little tiny dog with her who got along great with Everybody was amazing. I mean, she made Brie a little sensitive for a little while, but that's it. Yep. But we had such a good time just sitting there and talking. And I enjoyed the game because I didn't really care who won. I only picked that I was, quote, cheering for the Chiefs, end quote, because of the crazy fans of the 49ers. But, I mean, if the 49ers had won in fair and square, then the 49ers won in fair and square. I'm not going to shed any tears. Who cares? Right. Just like I'm not overly celebrating the fact that the Chiefs ultimately won. I don't care. And here I am. I never care about the Super Bowl yeah. at all because I don't like She likes football. the commercials. I do. I do like the commercials. Yeah, but it was, it was, year, it was a good. boring game for probably three of the four quarters. Um, you even said the first half of the fourth quarter was boring. That's why it's three of the four quarters. And the first half of the fourth quarter. Eh, yeah, it's like <laughs> 10 minutes left in the game. That's when it got interesting. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, it was like a defensive battle for most of the time before that, or, you know, the offense being bozos, whichever you want to say. Kind of just seemed like nobody was doing anything for the vast majority of it. But the key play of all plays was the blocked point after attempt on one of San, Fr- on San Francisco's uh, second touchdown. Yeah. Because... End of that game, they just kicked a field goal and tied the game and went into overtime. But if that was that extra point had counted, they would have to have gone for a touchdown. Play differently. And Taylor Swift didn't get engaged when they won. Yeah, that part was funny too. She did not get engaged. And I mean, I'll admit my old ass was sitting around waiting to see if it was actually going to happen because there were many, many rumors that it was going to happen. Um, but I should have realized that he's a person in the public eye and he would realize how like shallow that would be to do that at a moment like that and how it detracts from the whole thing and makes it about him, which it shouldn't be. So I should have known that, that it wasn't going to happen. And he was very professional and it never happened. Yep. And now since the Super Bowl, the internet has been bashing him because they're stupid. Yeah, because he got upset with his coach. But, I mean, he's a competitor. That's what you would expect. And, I mean, Super Bowl in Las Vegas was quite the success from what I'm hearing. Less awful than F1, per the locals. Yeah, but also smaller economic impact, too. You think about it. As far as annoyance to the people who live here, F1 was like six months of irritation the first time. I don't know what it's going to be the second day, but it was like six months of solid irritation. Mm -hmm. Super Bowl was one weekend they closed the 15 from Tropicana to Russell. And then now a a second weekend, they're going to close the 15 from Tropicana to Russell because they put in a temporary bridge across Tropicana for the Super Bowl. Uh, That's four days. Minor other traffic on the strip. So it had one third of the economic impact of F1, but was 1% of the headache for people. Well, but that's because the infrastructure was already there. I think the more fair comparison, and you alluded to it, is not this first one where they built the the infrastructure, but compare it to the next one and see how bad it is. Right. Because if the next one is even remotely similar, as bad as it was the first one, then there's something wrong. I think at the very least, they're going to have to put that bridge back in over like the Flamingo Bridge. So at the very worst, it'll be the same. How about that? They might need to rethink that freaking bridge from what I'm hearing. I feel bad for the people there. I don't agree with them that the government should pay them money. I don't. But But the government should take their welfare into consideration next time. 100%. 
especially since they know that it's a problem. Yep. It's just dumb. But like I said, it was a huge booming success here. Made us a ton of money. Um, we had a lot of entertainment out of it. Yeah. And um, for well, like. We also went to see The Offspring. Yeah, that's right. That was a free That was a free show that we went to. Yeah. On Fremont Street. And it was because of the Super Bowl. They did. Yeah. Uh, there was a, doing some a... country dude was on Friday night and then The Offspring were Chase on. Chase somebody or other. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. And then The Offspring on Saturday. And night. The Offspring is always rad live. They were so good. So good. And they were even better than when, at when we were young. Is that when we were young, they wouldn't shut up. Yeah. Blabbity, blabbity, blah, blah, blabbity, blabbity, blah, 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 valentine day uh, holiday in there as well and then we're caught up here you know um i think that uh that this talk of making vegas like the super bowl location is just stupid i agree <laughs> i don't understand just just i mean it's gone phenomenally well in many other places why didn't we say make that the place i mean if it was if it was a let's make las vegas the super bowl every five years like more regularly Okay, that's cool. Yeah, that I could get There's a lot more infrastructure to welcome that many people here than there are in other cities. 100%, all in one place. Right, literally across the street from the football stadium. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. So, I mean, it makes sense that it would be a regular place to have it, but every year is stupid. I mean, as an example, just for the people who don't know, when we left that opening night experience, opening day experience or whatever it was mm-hmm. called, we we walked out to the bridge that walks over the 15 freeway we walked over the 15 freeway and landed at mandalay bay it was like a five minute walk yeah it took five minutes if that yeah and i actually think it took longer because of all the super bowl shit that was there had that not been there it probably would have taken two minutes to get there and that's you know and that's how they've built this stadium it's like right there like it is like stone's throw from the edge of the strip it's very smart, very smart. So money maker, people can stop complaining. In fact, there was a big article about how the Super Bowl naysayers can stick it. Basically, you know, I'm translating, but that's basically what they said. So yeah, there that was that. So we're I don't still know, tired man. from the whole week. <laughs> I am. I am. I I know. Yeah. I am. I feel it in my bones. Um, when I stand up, etc. So yeah, that's all for me though. I don't have anything left to talk about because I don't have anything left to talk about. Good night, everyone. Hasta la bye bye. Thank you for listening to the Nightly Rant. If you enjoyed the show, please give us a five star rating on Apple Podcasts or Google Play. If you didn't enjoy the show, please just ignore that previous request for a rating. This has been a Yogi's Podcast Network production.